Greetings, family. This is Bomani Tamba, and welcome to our Black Star Pan African Community Meeting. And today's date is August 27th. And uh, yes, family, I got my uh, Black Star uh, soccer jersey. I'm here with my good brother, Aziba, also, as uh, we're going to get into some topics that we are uh, sent via email in the newsletter and also posted on our WhatsApp page. Uh, so, me and brother Aziba, um, uh, and uh, you know, I'm here with my good brother, um, Charles and also Kamal. Uh, so uh, we're trying to just uh, motivate and uh, get people engaged in some of the things that we really need to talk about as a community and uh, really need to just get worked out. Uh, so it's been, you know, it's a journey when you decide to get um, you know, land or acquire land to build a community. Uh, it's different phase of things that has to go on. And then the most difficult part is getting the legal paperwork and uh, getting the land and getting those things in place. But even once you get those things in place, now, the next thing that you have to figure out and work out, uh, which you know probably is always the number one thing, is uh, infrastructure and making sure that uh, roads are good so uh, anyone that's looking to build their house can uh, make their way from the Jahadzi main road right there to our Black Star Pan-African community. Uh, so that's what we're here to dialogue about. Uh, so what I want to do uh, to get right to the point is I'm going to uh, do a screen sharing on our newsletter. That way we can look at... Uh, you know, the uh, conference detail. All right, so that is our newsletter, and uh, hopefully everyone can see it. All right, so today's title we have, because um, we just usually work different uh, titles, uh, and let's get these videos out and share. It's called uh, Repatriation to Ghana and Developing Community Land. So one of the things that we focus on is uh, to make sure that uh, we have the best support for our brothers and sisters who are leaving from America to Ghana. Now, as time go along and we get more things established in the country and we uh, do more with our business office there, uh, we can definitely help people more and more. But also looking to get uh, those of us that are members and other people out there to reach out and connect with us so we can work on building this energy and take it to the next level. And the next level is really just um, infrastructure uh, basic roads, lights, and things like that. Uh, people have done well with their solar system and also their water system, uh, but eventually we'll love to have uh, real uh, grid electricity and also uh, real grid water system that you know maybe we can organize ourselves. So I've been looking at many different things dealing with sustainable living uh, over the last uh, 15 years and just been a person learning and learning. So this is one of the real practical projects that we get to put our learning and put uh, the things that we have learned uh, to, in place. So this is our logo, Black Star Pan-African Community. I uh, appreciate my brother who put this logo together. Uh, it, uh, it's a nice energy of what we're looking to uh, build. You know, I got the Black Star, I got the Ghana flag, and uh, you know, a nice uh, house with uh, trees around it and a beautiful African sunshine. So, those are, you know, so that's the element and the energy we're looking to bring. And I'll scroll down from the newsletter. These are uh, my brothers that uh, we actually started uh, building the foundation of what is Black Star Pan-African community. Not everyone is still around. Uh, we do have a new surveyor. The chief is still around. And the lawyer, um, trying to get him to work with another lawyer for us so we can get some more things done. And um, I got a new consultant to help us to progress things further. So that's one of those things where people are not doing what they're supposed to do because uh, you know the people that you have, and your crew, they're getting the money to do the job to make sure that um, you know we have our land, make sure people can build and things like that. And uh, one of the things that we've been able to organize is, you know, we've been able to get a few good builders, which is I'm very impressed by that. Uh, because when you're in a rural area, you know, you're you're gonna be limited on builders. So most of our builders are professionals that uh, live around Accra, places like our uh, prom prom, and uh, they've made a dedication to work with us. So. Definitely want to appreciate our builders. That's something that has gone on well. Every builder that I've built a home or work on a home, um, I haven't had any complaints um, or if there's something going on, I don't know about it. But uh, so definitely appreciate our Ghanaian brothers being efficient and delivering for us. So I'd like to always tell people that uh, whenever they see certain things going on with uh, different people in Africa, uh, let's not generalize everyone like everyone is about one thing. Uh, so if you, in the case of builders, you have builders that are good and builders that are just not going to deliver. Uh, so our goal is always to find the best people in the country to work with and build a relationship with. And our chief brother, Nana Haiti, has been, you know, been a good energy. Uh, if any of us ever have any issues or problems, you know, he's the man of the town. 
Uh, he knows everyone, uh, including law enforcement, which is always good because uh, you know, if there's any trumped up charges or any issues that we have, uh, he's there to uh, work with us. And uh, his um, you know, palace is right there in the middle of the town. And uh, you know, it's one of those things where you know, when we, you know, when we rise and things grow for us, you know, we want to show him the love also and help him build and complete his palace and the things that he's looking to do. So we're partners uh, in this uh, movement. Uh, so, and then we're always looking for more partners to work with. So this is always our conference call credentials. I always tell everyone that this is just the same information. Click on the link, join. If you can't uh, join, then you can just go to uh, Zoom and then you can put in the meeting ID and the password. And uh, this is our certification of incorporation. And then this is one of our last uh, group. I uh, just always love the vibrant energy. I'm trying to see where Azebo is at. Oh, there you go, right there in the white black star shirt. And Azebo, I, I know I promised you, but uh, me and you have to work on some new designs for some uh, black star shirts that I can get ordered here and things. Uh, as you can see, the quality in the shirts I get done by the, these professional companies here, it's just a big difference. So definitely I uh, want to make sure we do that so we can have some fresh colors. And I think uh, Azebo, I think uh, a, a black, uh, black star uh, Pan-African t-shirt would be good. So uh, in the wake of our next journey next year, I have enough time to work on those things. All right, go ahead, brother. Yeah, I already got a, I already got something set up for that. You know, I, I'm a, I'm a, you, you late. I'm already doing it. No, I'm talking about printing from this side, the different colors. You know, I like right. white T-shirts. White T-shirts are always nice. But I right. got about a bunch of different white T-shirts there. You know, and then, um, like, I got a bunch of Ghana white T-shirts, but it just, it goes bad after a while. So, like one of my best T-shirts for African Africans have always been these black T-shirts, red, black, green, and gold. Uh, right. so I thought about the design, so we can create m multiple designs. And, you know, the good thing of it is when we take pictures and videos like this one, you, know, you have the black star shirt on, I have the African African, African shirt on, then uh, Rakin and his uh, wife have the, uh, the Ghana T-shirts on. So it's just like that vibrant energy. Right. Uh, right. And family, this is the first house that's completed and it's up and running. Um, what I like about this house is. Uh, once you come into the house, they have a uh, a gravel driveway. Uh, let me uh meet you back. So the gravel driveway is a is a great way to this um have and we you know when you watch some of the videos that we posted um from the community, you'll be able to see this uh, the entire house, and um, it's a uh, very remarkable. And one of the things you see around the house is you see that you have a chance to plant a lot of food trees. Now, being from Jamaica and then you know, from being born from the inception. Just waking up uh, to where you literally, that's the life you're around. It just get to the point where you just, you know, it becomes a way of life. Like, uh, we, you know, to where you just want to live in a rural area and you just want you and your community to plant a ridiculous amount of trees. And I think that's where we, we're falling off as a people. We're taking on the, um, you know, the New York City mentality. And like, I love New York City. But one of the issues I've always had in New York City is like, I'm like, where is the trees? Now you have Central Park and you have parks here and there, but it's like, you know, you're, you know, even when you're not in the city, you're in the city. Uh, but that's not a good proper way to live, especially since we live in a tropical environment. Definitely always recommend planting trees, planting trees. And this was, uh, so that's May 20, uh, 23. And it's another one of uh, our tour group members, uh, tour group uh, photos. And this is us at our Black Star Pan African community office slash house. And this is um, the one before that um, last year, and this is outside of the house. So I just wanted to share uh, th those information. And uh, what I have is the, always the BSPAC uh, documentation. Uh, and this is uh, videos and pictures, which is uh, linked uh, right there on our, our website. Then you have the Facebook group, and then you have the YouTube uh, playlist, which showcase every single last one of our videos we have done from conference calls, uh, presentation to us as being in the country on the land. So this is our 15 acres and uh, all of these plots are all gone and um, looking to work with as many people as possible so we can just build. But the part, point that I have to focus on is right here, the community center, the business and technology center, and also the security uh, office slash entrance. So this is where we have to raise the capital to build this foundation part. 
And then the other part of it is to build the roads that's going to come right here from the entrance, um, from the main road in Jahadzi. Yeah, so that's uh, our, our priority. And then naturally everyone else in the orange, uh, that's their plot. So they're going to build their own homes. So what? And then in the white is all of the, uh, the roads that we have. And all those roads are basically dirt roads because what we had, we had a bulldozer basically create these roads. And then we, and before all of that, the, the, we had the whole land wiped clean as far as being bulldozed down. And then we lay out the foundation, the pillars for each plot. And then we just made sure that the, the roads are just in place as far as this you know, dirt roads by a bulldozer, which is, um, which, you know, which is a start, uh, but uh, it's not effective in a country that has a rainy season like Ghana because dirt roads, dirt roads turn to mud. And I think that's one of the biggest issues that people have in certain areas in Ghana is that when it rains, it's just it's chaotic because it's mud. And the next thing you know, you have you know some form of erosion to where now a road that was a dirt road, now you have big gaps in the road. Uh, scrolling down, this is our 15-acre survey, signed, stamp, and approved. And this is uh this is actually my son's um uh, survey. Uh, so this is um how these are the new types of surveys, so they may be different from surveys that was done a year ago. Uh, but everyone that's on phase one, 15 acres, uh, your survey has been completed. It was a fight. I mean, really a fight to get them done and to thank everybody for being patient and things. And I wasn't playing and, and delaying anyone because it's not what we do. But when you're trying to run a business operation, I'm here in Georgia. My good brother Azibo is there in, in Ghana. And then we have other people like our consultant there. And even with all that energy, things don't get done. So people think sometimes that I need to be in the country the whole time. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I'm 45 years old. I'm, you know, I have my different business, my technology business, Africa tours. I can't just be in Ghana and work on it. So that's why I appreciate Azibo for being here at the office and uh, the security guys and other people that's a part of what we're building to work their part. Uh, so... And um, and I have to be here working with whoever to get access to eventually what we're going to get, uh, which is um, the grants that we're working and applying for and other um, you know, other funds to build what we need to build. So any help is always, um, you know, it's always good, especially those who are professionals in uh, grant writing or organizing way to do fundraisers or a perfect plan to do uh, corporate economics to get these things done. Uh, all of these are ideas that uh, have to be put on the table so we can dialogue. All right, so, uh, and what I did uh, once I just lay out that initial with the uh, the survey, uh, the the site map, and also, um, and also the uh, individual survey, the next thing that I have is uh, just to get right into the main topics. So um, you have main topics and also you have general topics because uh, this conference call, we can just do it to where it can last a few hours, but um, the goal was to get right to the point, so I just put together the main topics. So number one, road construction needs connecting from the Jahadzi Road to Black Star Pan African Community. Uh, proposals are needed for different methods. Uh, the Department of Town and Country Planning need to come out to do the assessment for the road construction. Equipment, labor, and material lists to be to build the road. Uh, roads also need to be surveyed. Uh, so the assessment, um, once we get an idea of the assessment, um, I'll get them the money to get the assessment done, and that will give us a start. So even this, getting the assessment done is another challenge because uh, I want to know when uh, when Aziba and whoever goes up there, if the people from the town and country are going to just hear the accent and say, you know what, the price, we're going we're gonna to multiply the price times 10. So those are some of the things that, you know, you don't want to have to deal with and things like that. So uh, we do have representation there in Ghana, so we'll do our best to work with them. Uh, especially our consultants to see what they can do and work out for us. Uh, but these are things that we just need help with because I'm not physically there. And the only thing I can really focus on is trying to get uh, the finance and trying to get other people to work with us and other companies or organizations to invest or work with us to build so we can just get this thing uh, done. So um, what I can do is just uh, open things up and we can dialogue about the uh, road construction and then we can just work our way down to uh, the other uh, the other main topics. But before I even continue, let me just scroll down and I'll get back to the main topic. So this uh, video right here, uh, I shot this video in May, 2021. And I wanted to show um, our members 
once we come once we're on the Jahadzi main road and then we're turning on the road which is would be called uh, you know uh, Garvey Way or Marcus Garvey Way um, uh, that uh, that uh, Baba Zibo is uh, you know have laid out uh, you'll see this a uh, great footage of the dirt road and these are small vehicles that we ride in and uh, just wanted to let people see you know the dirt road is fine in this situation because I want to say it wasn't raining that bad either you know, before so you know we was able to get uh, in a dry road. But think about the fact that when this road is just flooded with water and things like that. Uh, so that's why we have to eventually get it paved to where uh, trucks, vehicles, even when we're coming to visit with big groups of people, we want to be able to just drive up to the property and then park and then get out uh, versus us having to park by the main road and then having to walk, which, you know, you, it discouraged some people because sometimes people are traveling with us and they're already tired. Uh, but that isn't a... That, video right here is the example of the road that we're talking about for those who are not clear about that road and i want to say when i shot the video i shot it from the very beginning so you can actually see from the jihadzi road and then we drove all the way up to the community i'm gonna skip past the uh, general uh topics the general topics is just basically for those who are interested in what we're doing and they're not clear and this just kind of brings you up to speed uh talks about phase one Phase two, phase three, uh, possible future of phase three, which, you know, the goal is always the vision of the Bella Beach, an industrial uh, town or park. Uh, so that's uh, our ultimate vision. And when you're dealing with vested land, all you and your partners have to do is put the money together and you go to the Lands Commission. They'll work with the chief and the people in the Lands Commission. And then that's how you get your land. Not as simple as that, though, but uh, that's all the parties that have to be involved. The Lands Commission, the chief and uh, the core, uh, core members of the uh, group. Uh, and sometimes that core member is end up being the consultant because he's usually the person that's available to work with the attorney. Uh, so as we learn these things, we want to share them with other people because I'd love to see more people get where we are and do and, and get even further. Because at one point, I think this is as close as any of the communities have gotten, uh, where you know you have a few homes and a, an energy there. But it's you know, but before that, it was like none of these projects were getting completed. Garvey Town was a failure. Um, uh, Fianca was a, a complete fill-in and Fianca was a project I started working with them in 2006 to help them with marketing and help them bring people and started working with Garvey Town to do the same thing and you know, it's, you, just, you, know, you get disappointed so uh, you know, the existing group of us got together and this is what we built and we put it together and we put a lot of work into it so I appreciate everyone who have um, contributed and committed especially people who have um, acquired land and built their homes and so we just got to stay in the fight and keep working on these things. And so, yeah, this all talks about um, our community information. So we have talked about these things in the past. So this is the next thing right here. This is the video of the 60 acres phase two land investment at Black Star Pan-African community. So this, uh, this actual 60 acres is actually in the middle between, it's actually, it's in, it's in between our Black Star community office uh, now you have 15 acres that's um it's, it's separated by about a mile and so once we get some roads in that back area by phase two i really feel people are going to love it because i've went i've seen it only twice this is the second video i've made of it and i think this time i was just more impressed because we got a chance to go further down to see the rest of the land and it is incredible back there and when you build a, a house like two floors and maybe you have a roof uh, top you know, you get to see this the beautiful beachfront, and it's a clean, pristine beachfront. So, for those who uh, want to see, this is a nice uh, presentation. Uh, uh, Evans is our survey; has been our survey um, uh, uh, for the last uh, three years. After the first survey uh, didn't work out, and the chief ended up replacing him. Uh, so that was uh, not my decision; that was the chief decision. Uh, so Evans have done much better. So I appreciate him, and I'm doing our best to work with him. Uh, you know, it's a guy that's very busy because he has to do a lot of difficult work. This stuff is difficult for him to survey. You have to put all these things together, all of the dimensions, all the coordinates, all those things have to just be perfect. So when you're looking at uh, whether it's your, 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 your plot of land paperwork or uh, the 15 or the 60 acre site map, you're going to see a bunch of coordinates and uh, information. And this is how we use uh, we use this to also lay out where we want the the layout of the land to be. So below what you're going to see is a rough draft. And the digital layout of the 15 acres you see, trust me, family, 
I did it the same exact way. And uh, you know, then I needed to work with Evans and give him the draft that I created. And um, then he would just uh, modify it and create a digital copy of it based on uh, coordinates and uh, earmark. Uh, so this is, you know, so I'm going to work on this to make it uh, much, uh, much better. But uh, since I couldn't get a, a digital version uh, prepared, because I, it's hard to get a digital version prepared because we still have to make certain changes on this and things like that. So me and Evans are going to be working on this to get it uh, done. And the next thing that uh, we want to do is, um, since we have more people interested, once more people commit, uh, our goal is to start bulldozing the land, just like we did with the 15 acres, and then start setting things up little by little, and then individuals can choose their plots. They can still choose their plots now because it will be the same layout, um, but it just be a lot better and a lot more organized. Uh, so that's the situation. And as you can see, this is also the, uh, sur the actual survey itself. Um, that I made a copy of and I just draw those lines and work it out. So also for those who are those professional experience and you can take an image like this and you can create something digital and create something animated and things like that. We're, we're open to all those things. It's just we're limited on um, uh, from the board members to a few other community members who are actually always participating. You know, uh, we have a big group, but it's a small percentage of people that are working on these things. And then you have other people they're doing very hard work to try to make sure that their homes get built and put all their building plans in place. So, you know, we're not here to throw shades or be upset at, at members because they're tied up with things. You know, we do understand, uh, but we also understand that we need sometimes in a big group, at least, you know, maybe five to 10% of people to just lead the forefront of the energy and then motivate other people to this, you know, eventually do as best as uh, they can do uh, to contribute. And it's another thing uh, that we have uh, with, with these incredible co uh, committees, but it's just so hard to keep up with these. At one point, we had every, well, I still have all of these committees on WhatsApp. Uh, the only thing is this, we have to add new people to it and find out what the committees that people want to work in. But it's a list of 10 different uh, committees. Uh, so the foundation and the organization structure of what we need is in place. We just have to just find out a way to be more active and also to get more of the finance that we need to get more things done. So that is the thing that's uh, very, you know, very interesting now uh, because what you're dealing with, uh, we're dealing with people. And when you're dealing with people, you know, people are going to be real uh, and things like that. So the goal is uh, to literally just, um, just keep building and keep this uh, talking with us. And um, even if we have to just wait till we get there to really push these committees at a high level. But some of these committees are committees organized for us to get uh, like planning development and um there's another committee dealing with all right, business and professional affairs and planning and development. So those are some of the committees that uh, we just have to you know, work on right now. But uh, since we don't have enough people dedicated committees, you know, we just doing a general move to where we're connecting with those who you know, are open to working on things and we just work on it. And if no one is available, I'll work on some things by myself. Azibo is always working on things by himself and other people. Uh, so Let's keep on working on what we're working on. And, you know, the, the incredible thing is that we, we got very far uh, because most people don't even get this far to where they have any of these things in place. And these are some of the other old, older videos. Uh, that's Evans right there showing us around the land. And as you can see, the land has been freshly uh, cleared. And then literally our first group, December 2019. And as you can see, we rolled deep. It's a lot of us. And uh, that was this. You know, that was this. Uh, it, was, it, it was honestly this. Uh, just a breath of fresh air because uh you know you know you're like you finally feel like you've found somewhere where we can actually do the project that we have talked about for so long when you're in these uh black organizations you know we have these dreams of getting land and building a future in africa now getting the land and building the future and doing all those things uh that's the hard part uh just talking about it and envisioning and being excited you know very much the easy part and the introduction so as we go on, I even have uh, some information dated back to the foundation of when we started building and connecting. And that was September, 2019. So next month will be four years where we, you know, since we built the vision. But we also started a conference call in uh, 2000 and, um, 2019, August. Um, and then that's how we organized the energy to, to get it set off in September. So this just tells the story of 2019 and then we have this incredible business and investment conference um, and you know, just showing people that this is what we are about. We're about 
networking and connecting with a bunch of us so we can work this thing together. So some people in these business conference, they're not uh, affiliated or connected to our Black Star community, but they're also people in Ghana that's doing their own communities, but also there are people that's available to help um, in a professional manner to do things with us. And uh, one of our first uh, group uh, page, and some of these, uh, some of the people in this uh, <laughs> group photo, many of us are still great friends and we still connect together. Uh, so, you know, every time we do groups, I try to, you know, at least build with uh, three to five people where we have a solid relationship and they understand the vision. Uh, so this is one of the more effective groups. I see seven to eight people that I've talked to recently that's from this group. Uh, uh, this is, uh, that's what I love about these old videos. This is a video of Leonard and Carmen House before anything was around it. So you've seen, so people, so I just want everyone to see the progress. And this is my, me and my good brother that's showing people raw land and saying, hey, Africa for the Africans, let's connect our energy together. All right, and this more documentation and we just show our energy of what we've been doing in Africa. So people are clear and so individuals can take us serious. But let me uh, get back to the main topic. And at the same time, too, let me open things up uh, for, for you, Azebo, if you want to talk about uh, what we have here, which is our main topic uh, for road construction needs. Uh, if you want to just open up and share with us um, your research and things that we've talked about, and I can just stop the uh, screen sharing. Uh, let me um, just get you unmuted. All right, so unmute yourself, uh, Azibo. Okay. Greetings, brothers. Do a quick introduction about yourself and uh, just talk with us about this Garvey Way Road and why it's so important. And what are the things that we can well, do? Um, my name is uh, Baba Azibo, and I'm uh, vice president of the uh, Black Star Pan African community. Uh, what we were doing is, uh, you know, we, we, we've we have a chance to build a road, and we all know without a road, a road is, is part of the uh, infrastructure. But to, to even get the uh, the infrastructure built, it's, it's got to be a road. It's got to be a road for that, um, because a lot of a lot of the stuff that that you use for infrastructure is really is really heavy. It's, times you know uh, so so we 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 need we need a road and a road is a part of the infrastructure and also the road itself has an in, in infrastructure especially the type of road that we want to build this uh, marshy we have to go through a marshy type of a soft ground soft ground type of a, um uh, path. We have to build a path. In, in the low, the, the road, what it does is it, it, it sinks down and goes like into sort of like a valley type of uh, uh, area. And I, I think it's I think it's about comparative to maybe a uh, two or three, a block and a half, about a block and a half uh, in terms of length. But this is this, this is a low lying area, area because of the uh, rainy season. When it does rain, all of the water goes to that area, and uh, we uh, what was was needed in building the road towards the uh, the path is uh, to to the uh, guards gate of Black Star is uh, we need a we need a surveyor. Uh, Surveyor is number one, and uh, the the major uh, the number two area it would be um, those uh, concrete tubes. I, I forget what the, what they call these long tubes. Uh, it's it's sort of like the uh, the uh, water that that settles during the rainy season. It, it goes it, it goes back and forth. Uh, uh, so 
rather than putting a road over that, it, it would just be washed out. So it, it would have to be reinforced with these concrete tubes so that the water can go back and forth freely without any uh, problems. And it, also, it would also not, not disturb the road. Uh, we, we got about, we got about, about uh, four or five feet of water every rainy season. A, a lot of times, heavy equipment try to go through that area and they get stuck because the ground is really soft and uh, it's, it's difficult to get heavy trucks in there, plus uh, carrying heavy equipment. So our solution was to build uh, what the, a road, or, and, and the most cheapest way to do it is uh, to use a technology called mechanical concrete. Um, I made a video about it, I think about a year ago. We, we've been on this project for about a year. Uh, uh, we, we've uh, been on the prices of the material, price price of labor, and price uh, of uh, rental equipment. Um, what we really need is a is a, is a team uh, that that's able to do this type of construction with uh, with the. Uh, um, not, not, not only construction of, of the buildings, but uh, constructing the road itself. So uh, I talked to the chief, the chief of uh, the office today, and he brought a friend with him. Uh, he, he, he's, just, he's not a part of Black Star, but he's having the same problem, trying to get, trying to get a, a road to his, his uh, place. He built a house right right outside of uh, the uh, Black Star community, and uh, he's he's based in uh, he's based in uh, the U.S. But he's a native Ghanaian, and uh, he said the the the, the uh, way that he found Jahazi was uh, was through um, uh, Bomani's video, and, and that's. That's, excuse me, excuse me. Yeah. Okay, just just a minute. Okay. You're not going to come to the hospital with me from where the staff is. I told everything what you know. So you, you're not hey, Azebo, Azebo, what are you doing, brother? Yeah. All right, um, so let me uh, continue. Um, Azebo uh, somehow stepped away. Uh, so, um, family, Azebo is talking about the um, the roads and the history of the roads. So, I'll wait till you get back. Uh, brother Charles or Kamal, uh, do you have anything you want to share about the roads and things like that? And uh, Kamal, if you want to share your frustration, I'm trying to get up there. If you can just explain the situation to us, because uh, not everybody knows about the situation with the roads, because uh, not everybody's trying to build. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'd like to be able to get a, a visual idea of how Backstar community is in relation to the other communities, you know, that how we're going across their plots and everything. Where am I? Because we we've been coming from the north side of the uh, of the community, and somebody had built a wall, and I see somebody knocked pieces of it out, so we was able to go across that and get to the house. <laughs> so I just yeah. would like to be able, be able to get a like a, a visual to see how our community is in relation to everybody else that's around that area. Uh, I don't know if I'm clear. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm sure. Um process uh what you are uh, you're saying uh, you, you're trying to get an idea of um yeah of how it all you know, if, yeah yeah you know because apparently we're going across other people's plots that's not part of the community yes when we do that on the um i don't know, I don't know it's um on the back side uh, cl closer to where the chief uh, palace is on that back end uh, that's exactly what we're doing because all of that land is other people land they just haven't developed it yet or done anything with it 
so eventually, you know, naturally that's going to stop. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure who knocked a hole out in the wall, but those are things that, uh, you know, we don't want to be doing to people because we don't want other people to do it to us. So that's why yeah, we have yeah. to really figure and focus on this uh, road construction. I wish we had some more people to give us some support on how we can figure it out. Cause I'm always telling people that, um, you know, we don't have everything figured out and that's not the pur pur purpose of this individual. Uh, and that's the purpose of the, uh, the group. So groups can, and fill in where other people can't fill in so still trying to figure those uh those uh things out so um right now i think the best thing that we can do is really just get an assessment uh so i'm going to try to find out what the quote is so i can pay the person to do the assessment that way we can have something on paper and then from there we can just kind of add it on paper especially using our builders um which are probably our best bet of people that can actually uh, just help us uh, figure out how the, the road is going to really work and what we can get done on it and um, and kind of calculate uh, what method is better. Uh, as he would talk about mechanical concrete, which is basically uh, used tires, gravel, and other materials, uh, which is not a bad uh, option. And, and then you have the regular paving way of paving a road. So even I'll be definitely even more interested in finding out what that is um, based, you know, based on just how the, the roads and the rest of the part of the town looks. Uh, so I just have to really just uh, keep talking with uh, Nana Haiti and just get him to uh, work with us, uh, with the people in town and country, because I don't want them to think that we're a bunch of rich people and they're going to shake us down. So that's the reason why I really appreciate uh, the Chief Nana Haiti and all of our Ghanaian, uh, whether the builders or consultant and business and people out there helping us. Because uh, they really bridge the gap on just making sure things work out for us. Yeah. So I'm hoping that um, that we can really just put something on paper because we have to get to the point where the documentation of the road construction is being put on paper. Okay. Yeah. So to that way, um, and uh, the thing that's uh, strange uh, is uh, that other people are also there that are building along the path. So somehow we have to be able to connect with them and how we can actually just get this done. Okay. Yeah. Hey, uh, Zebo, um, are you back, brother? All right. So Charles, uh, let me know if you have anything to share. Well, not really particularly, really, you know, because, In reference you know, to as you were saying in the rainy season, man, it's hell on earth trying to move around in Ghana. You know, it, it's not easy in the rainy season, but when it's the summer season, it's not so bad. But, um, you know, that's just one of the, the challenges of relocating from the West to Ghana. You have some, some challenges with the infrastructure, you know, so. Yeah, I can't really say much more about it, really. You know, it's, it, it is what it is. Uh, all I could say is, like, you know, I heard Azebo come up with a, a, a way of building a road out, out of tires, I think, out of used tires. Um, I don't know. I've never really looked into the into that method of building roads out of tires. Sounds good, but you know, reality is it feasible? That's the thing. Uh yes. Um, and that's um, that's a that's a great argument right there. Is it feasible? So yeah. Uh, in order for us to find out if it's feasible, what we have to do is we have to literally put together different assessment. Um, the traditional way the roads are built, get an assessment on that, and then also um. Uh, a sustainable way of building roads like uh, using a uh, used material and things like yeah. that which will ultimately uh, which will ultimately cut down on the material costs uh, because use and um, natural materials that you have there that you can use um, you know, it's going to naturally cut the cost uh, versus paying for the heavy stuff to to do a paved road uh, so that is um, <laughs> the interesting situation that uh, we're looking to figure out so Somehow I just gotta um, just connect with the chief and connect with him on how we can talk with town and country and the and work with the builders so they can all just work on us getting things done ahead of time to where it's on paper 
it's an organized game plan because uh, I don't want us to be spinning our wheels for another year uh, on this. Uh, originally, Aziba started a concept and it was just to build an energy as far as the roads and things like that and come up with a name of it and concept and things. So it was not much really put into it. But now we're actually putting the energy into it because uh, we're in a situation where the other end of the property, you know, more people are going to start building. Once yeah. we build their walls, we're going to be limited on driving in the back way. Uh, so we definitely have to fix the problem on that main road. So that's like literally our number one concern beyond anything else at this very moment. Uh, uh, Kamau, you have uh, anything to share? Yeah, um, I, was, I want to find about uh, putting the light poles in and without encroaching on anybody's properties. So I'm going to have to wait for a survey for that or what? Yeah, the, the light poles are some... Now, as far as uh, your specific property, um, uh, like I was looking at what Leonard and Carmen did, and also I think I was looking at uh, Kim's house, and I was looking to see, I, I noticed that they plant their uh, lights around the entire uh, physical property within the actual, um, yes. in the actual you know, uh, wall fence, since the wall yes. fence represent the entire perimeter. So I would say yes. it have to be physically inside uh, but then we have to work with a surveyor if anything is going to be put outside of the property because he has to really lay out what is sidewalk and things like that. Uh, and you're trying to, you know, you're trying to understand the way that people are doing things because you just see it different from just being in America where I've seen a ridiculous amount of land get cleared here. Like there's one right down the street. It's about 10 acres and they're building a new, uh, you know, a new apartment complex. And, you you know, you're seeing these things and. You know, we just, you know, we, we just have to get it to where we do the same thing as they are doing. So even the deal with um, a company with every heavy machines will help because when I'm looking at, you know, that that um, that apartment complex is being built, I'm seeing all of the machines and all the things that they're doing. And um, it's, you know, it's all, it's all, you know, planning that they have planned and arranged ahead of time. Uh, we didn't do that level of planning. Um, and that's the issue that we have in Ghana. You, you're kind of forced to just go somewhere and start clearing land and building your home. But then you know, in America, you're traditionally used to this, all the infrastructure and all those things being put in first. Uh, so if we're ever to do something again in the future, that's what we have to do because the way it's done in Ghana, typically it's you end up just having your home and then now you have a bunch of bad roads. Yeah. So for those who are listening to this video and uh, you have expertise, uh, you can share and things like that you know we're always open on none of us are here claiming that we're experts on any of these things uh it's more so research and development with a a, a group of us that's none of us are experts on any of these things and we're all willing to learn but we definitely need some expert help uh so even uh charles um uh, even if some of the people that you work around have some of these experience and things like that like especially the road construction and just definitely open uh to these things because i want us to get these things moving because I know people are frustrated because they're trying to get their homes built. And I, I'm not sure how bad this rainy season has been, but I'm sure it's been, you know, it's usually the same time the rainy season is here in Georgia. And it, it's not that bad here because, you know, you have modern uh, infrastructure, but I can imagine how it is there in Ghana, in the area during these uh, rainy times. So Charles, if you want to share anything, uh, share. Um, and also um, come out if there's anything else you want to share about the uh, roads and um, any ideas or suggestions uh, or anything I ask everyone to do. You can always uh, send me a separate message on WhatsApp. Uh, WhatsApp so I can keep up with the uh, documentation because I really want to put so something together in the form of a nice typed up proposal and share because when you're trying to do things with people, and you don't have things organized and in place, it's hard for them to assist you. It's just kind of like the, the, the grants. You have to have so much put together to make it effective. Yeah. So yeah. let me see. yeah. So uh, let me know if you want to share anything before I move on to our uh, number two topics. No, you go, you go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So so in closing for the road construction, that's our game plan. Our game plan is to put together organized documentation and build a real proposal. Um, and just kind of take it from there and share with our group members that everyone know that uh, we're putting energy and effort into it. And once they look through it, anyone that wants to um, you know, contribute, help, 
or just share anything that may progress us. We're always open to that. All right, uh, number two, uh, all plan of land surveys um, are completed uh, for the 15 acres for all members. Uh, so once you have that, uh, you can start working on your building plans, start getting things organized, uh, reach out to us about builders and things like that, and we'll just keep our building on to that uh, strong as far as uh, more builders. And if you have your own builder, that's uh, absolutely fine. Uh, uh, three, uh, organize uh, your building plans. Uh, so think about the architect uh, that you want to work with and things like that also. Uh, number four, uh, we talked about it. We have a new security officer. Um, his name is Charles, which is a popular name. So um, my goal next time is to get his uh, last name. But uh, we have two security officers and uh, one of them may need some flexibility. So we need to get another person in. And also this person uh, has experience so he can train other people. And just trying to keep a present of just um, you know, Ghanaian security people and other people around us to just kind of be a lookout because you know that's what it is. Uh, we're in a rural town by ourselves, and uh, you know we definitely have to build alliance and friendship. And our, our goal is always to to build love from the community, and we, you know we try our best to show love and support uh, to the town and the community. Uh, so it's something that uh, you know Zebo is there uh, building public relations, uh, which has helped out a lot. Uh, five. Uh, Financial support, uh, planning for cooperative economics, grants, and investors uh, for infrastructure projects, mainly roads, lights, drainage, also community development of the business and technology center, community center, security office, and main entrance. So when we talk about financial support and uh, grants and things like that, uh, all those things I mentioned is going to cost. So uh, one of the big game plan is for those who have connections to good grant writers, for those who can actually write decent proposals for those who could do things, uh, reach out to us so we can work together and we can create multiple of these things. It doesn't have to just be one solid one because you have to just work your angles. Uh, so that's the part that, you know, we're just lacking uh, help with. Um, on, you know, and it's what it is. We're working to get through it. So um, I'm always telling everyone I'm on WhatsApp. Uh, I'm in the group page. I'm here working throughout the week uh, and you can just always reach out. I'm always open to recommendations and suggestions and people working together, putting things in place. So I'm sharing this with everyone in our group and also other people out there because we're just being real. Uh, you know, I see the developers out here that's developing all of these, all of these um, uh, communities and, uh, and complexes that I've seen over the, the time living here in Georgia. You know, it's usually a group of uh, a few different rich uh, white guys put their money together and things like that. But uh, we don't have that kind of luxury. Uh, so what we have to do is black cooperative economics for those of us putting our energy together, putting our money together, working together and figuring it out together. So all hands is always you know, required on deck to just get this done. And if all hands is not ready, we just reach out and say, hey, family, uh, we need the best 10% of people to work with. All right, and... So number six, uh, repatriation, living and doing business in Ghana and all the challenges that you may face, solutions and tactics to make it all work. Uh, so it's one of those things where we're telling people who never been to Africa and you're coming for the first time to, you know, to countries like Ghana, which is what I never usually recommend, but not everybody want to come on our tours or want to do an initial fact finding mission. But once you're here, you just got to roll with the flow of things. You know, example, one of the conversations I had uh, was in the town that we're in, almost none of the homes have hot water and air condition, uh, the, you know, including the community that we live in. Um, and it's just what it is. If you go to Accra now, you have all of those options. So for those who are looking to live in a rural area, what I'm recommending them to do is just be, understand that you need to build what you need because other than that, uh, you won't have that access to things. So even when we're building the, more of the town, we're gonna have to find ways to make the sewers not look like the sewers of Accra or the drainage and things like that. So uh, you can get a lot of these things done in a, in a small town, especially a densely populated town uh, like uh, Jahadzi. But it takes, you know, it takes an incredible union of people working together. And um, I don't know if we have all those people together, but I'm consistently out here recruiting, reaching out to people, trying to build energy, trying to reach out to members that 
I actively want to work on things, but we're limited by many different things. Yeah. So definitely want um anyone that um have these expertise and I'm serious, family, reach out uh to me, no matter who you are. You know, you could be a group of Chinese people, uh developers. Uh, I'm all open to dialogue and things like that. Uh, because definitely want to make sure we bring this home. Uh, me and my family and other people are looking to build uh in the next uh you know year or two or, or soon. And uh we want to really just start getting these things in place. Um and you know, by the time you know it, uh, next five to ten years, you have an incredible town. But uh, all of that can only happen if uh, we as a people, uh, you know, literally just figure it out together. And uh, no other way. Uh, so those are the things that uh, you know, I wanted to share and uh, go over and let everyone know. I posted that on their group WhatsApp page so everyone can see the notes and details. So. Anyone who wants to connect with us on any part of it, they can reach out and I'll be available. But my goal is to keep everybody posted on um, on updates on the assessment and other things that we talk about the land since that's complete, completely the, the main priority. And uh, we just need to just get that worked out sooner than later. Uh, so uh, this um, you know, family has been, a, has been a beautiful journey. I've learned a lot, um, you know, been through a lot with this situation, but uh, you don't grow without going through challenges. And things like that so but i just really appreciate all of the people and it's not one or two it's just a lot of people you know uh well over 50 people who have just give they gave their dedication and has been you know real supportive and you know and it's been very cool you know so when you're doing these things you don't always keep everyone that you get but uh we've been through it to where some people decided to do what they're doing because they may not necessarily want to put the time and energy into building in a complete complete rural area from the ground up, even though that was what was explained from the beginning in showcase and presentation and in detail writing and documents. Uh, but after a while, when you commit to certain things, sometimes you realize that uh, you're not going to make it. So nevertheless, uh, I appreciate the people who replaced them. And uh, now we can just uh, work more in a union. So a good brother, Africa and Kamal. Um, let me know if you have anything uh, you want to share before we close out. No, I don't have anything else. If anything, I'll, I'll email you or, or, or I'll text you. <laughs> oh, perfect, because uh, I'm looking for those emails and uh, texts for any suggestions and things like that. Okay. Yes, my brother, Africa. And also, um, Brother Africa, um, if you can even share some of um, you know, the recommendation of what people need to do to make sure that things work for themselves in Ghana, because um, not, not a lot of people are clear about uh, what really goes on in the country. And while we're waiting for our brother to get back, let me do a final screen sharing. And so once again, that is our 15 acres uh, layouts. So the next thing I have is our YouTube page. And so once you go to our YouTube page, you basically just scroll down and you'll see the Black Star Pan-African Community uh, video log and so far it's 166 videos and that is videos that we have recorded for four straight years from August September of 2019 to now August 2023 and so last video was we talked about the road construction but the road construction video also showcase um, us uh, showing videos of the mechanical concrete so that was a nice uh, short presentation so we're just building on to that one and I'll talk about the 60 acres and the rest of these videos here is just our last time in Ghana in May uh, and June. And then you scroll all the way down, you see all of the circle highlights. And then this is our Facebook page. So on the Facebook page, that's good brother Azibo right there. On the Facebook page, uh, we just have media stuff, which is the albums, plus the last few times that we have been in uh, the Jahazi. So this is where all the photos are. So that's the pictures. And then the other link was uh, the videos. 
And then on this uh, page, we just do our best to just post a lot of information about uh, Black Star community. And then once you're on our website, it's the link right there, right at the main menu that say Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community. So that gives anyone that's interested, there's a fresh, full details of our community and um, all of the foundation documents and all of the need to know before you make your commitment. So once I click on a link, uh, it gives you a list of different articles. And beyond just you know, reading these articles and things, you just have to put your mindset in a place where is this something that you can commit to and be dedicated to it for the long run. And so we go into the uh, introduction of Black Star Pan-African Community. Uh, we have another li second link is site maps, land survey, GPS location, things like that. So if anybody's ever trying to find a physical location, um, that's why I know that most people don't read the documents because people literally call me and ask me about uh, th those information right there. And it's literally a GPS location. So from our, they have information for the 15 acres, the 60 acres, and also uh, for the business office. Uh, Lands Commission search, then uh, prime objective, business opportunities, building and buying homes, uh, membership rules and code of our conduct, membership application. Um, and these things that I'm talking about, I'd rather send it to you via email uh, so you can just have the actual uh, files, uh, pictures and videos. So all the uh, pictures and videos that we have uh, done in reference to Black Star, uh, once you click on that, you have the links to YouTube and Facebook. Uh, committee is what we talked about earlier on the newsletter. The, 10 different committees, bylaws, um, uh, which is a, a long bylaws. And then the last and the final and most important thing, getting started, land costs, requirements, refund policy, and things like that. So um, if somebody wanted to get right to the point with the documents, they can just click on that and then get right to the point. Uh, but uh, in order to just be clear on things, as I mentioned earlier with other things, just work your way down and read through information and then you know, be clear and then write questions down and we can dialogue. Right now, the next energy we're moving towards is the uh, 60 acres. So we're going to be working on both phases. Uh, one will be just, you know, in more progressive stage. And the other one, we're just, you know, working it because we can't wait to the last minute to do these things. So we have to just, and, and it's just like the acquisition of 60 acres. We had to do that a while back so we can have it in place to do what we need to do. And uh, we couldn't wait till we finished the 15 acres and say, you know, the 15 acres is complete. Let's go get that 60 acres. No, that wouldn't happen. By then, the 60 acres is gone. Uh, so uh, I feel like we've made a lot of great decisions and uh, our struggles is some of the other decisions that uh, we need help with, which uh, we're not professionals. But, um, uh, you know, a group, a group uh, mind sharing of things always helps. So reaching out for more energy to build and continue. Um, and also in the town itself, for other business people who want to come in and acquire land and build different aspects of what a town needs. It's an open game, an open situation. And we have our consultants and attorney ready to work with you to where, you know, the deal could be put together and things could be cleared up at the Lands Commission. So you can get the land that you need and you can build your project. And then for people that are doing other things, you know, eventually what we'll like to do as far as Black Star Pan-African communities, run our operation more as a management operation to where investors come in and uh, they build apartments on the 60 acres and we manage it, uh, things like that. And we just make uh, some of our cut to reinvest back in our community from providing business and professional services. So we have a whole lot of potential and a whole lot of uh, opportunities. We just got to stay committed to it and work it amongst ourselves and just be real with each other and be very supportive of each other because all we have is us. Uh, we're in a country where uh, we're still trying to get uh, people to understand our history and our struggles from where we come from. And we're still trying to learn uh, our own brothers and sisters in Ghana, learn more about their life and their struggles, and ultimately trying to work more together as a people. So this is never a project to separate us. It's a project that brings us closer together as a people. But in order for us to be closer together as a people, we have to have something to contribute, something to share, something to come with. Uh, and you know, and that's, then both parties can connect and things could be more fruitful. 
So that's the energy we've been putting out on uh, even YouTube in general and putting out um, and other shows that we do. Let people know, hey, this is what we're working on and we're building on it. And this will be a great beneficial situation for us as a people because when some of our, our brothers and sisters are from the, Af uh, from the African diaspora that are there in Ghana and they run through certain things, then what you don't want them to do is um, to run back to America or get in a situation where they're just desperate and they have to really just beg the American embassy to help them. You know, we want to be able to help our own brothers and sisters in this movement and create opportunities for them and say, hey, you know, come join us in our community. You know, we have a place for you to lodge. We have work for you. Um, you know, you have great skills. You know, we appreciate your skills that, that you have learned all your life. How about you come and work with us to where, you know, you can do uh, training and, and things like that for our students and our young generation of people that we're training to run, manage, to build, run and manage a community or a town eventually. So those are some of the things I wanted to share with uh, your family. So appreciate everybody joining us. And uh, what I'll do is I'll keep everybody posted. And as usual, I'll keep uploading information to our group WhatsApp. Uh, so anyone that uh, wants updates, you can always scroll through. And it's one of those pages where we're just sharing information as far as updates. It's not a page where you can post your Ukraine videos or you can talk about uh, what's going on with Trump in Atlanta and things like that. Those things are unacceptable. Um, we're here to talk about only serious business when it comes to Black Star Pan-African community. If you want social pages to do those things, that's what Facebook and all those other networks are for. That's, where, or that's why they, people have other um, uh, WhatsApp page. But I'm a person that want to show people a level of seriousness. So all the pages that I have, uh, online uh, about our business operation is goes straight up it shows straight up seriously about what we're doing and it gets right to the point and it's not uh, anything else there that's going to disturb the flow uh, so that's what we do we're trying to just get us to stay on a focus uh, journey that way we can just um, get the support and energy we need and build this out and um, it's it's up to us to do these things um, uh, you know we can't um, let um whatever system that we think affects us uh, stopping us. Because right now, all I see, uh, I don't see anyone in our way. Um, I see us just having to figure out how to get ahead and uh, keep ahead and keep building. That way we can inspire other people to do this because we're one of the, we're, we're some of the few people along with um, people from uh, two different other communities uh, in Ghana um, that, you know, is this far. And which is good because you know, before you didn't have three community energy where people can go and they can just get land and start building their home and, and things like that. Uh, it was a lot trickier than that before. Uh, so we're making small progress uh, in Ghana little by little. And um, it's, been, it's been a long 17 years and it's been one of my greatest experience traveling to, to Ghana and just really just growing and learning certain things. Uh, but now we definitely want to get more into real estate development. Uh, so the Black Star Energy, we're going to keep strong. With our family, um, everyone appreciates you joining us. Uh, once again, family, this is Bomani Tamba, uh, your organizer and president here at Black Star Pan African Community and um, a board member. Uh, where we're gonna just keep on working on what we're working on and keep on building. Uh, so I'll be on standby if anybody ever wanna reach out to me or connect with me and things, um, and we just get uh, things work out. So family, enjoy the rest of your beautiful Sunday on this uh, August 27th. And uh, we're going to keep uh, you know, keep you posted, keep you connected, and we're going to keep it strong. All right, so everyone, good night. Good night. All right, uh, good night and uh, take care. And um, so family, the journey uh, continues. Yeah. Okay. Good night, my money. Uh, yes, brother. Absolutely appreciate you joining us and joining the energy. Okay. No problem. Peace.